In this video, we will look at another type of iteration or looping in Java, which is the for loops. We usually use for loops when we know how many items we are going to process or how many times we will perform the same operation over and over again. So for example, if you want to read five numbers from the user or you are expecting five input values, in that case, you'll be using a for loop. Or for example, if you wanted to add five numbers, you wanted to find the maximum of 20 numbers, or you wanted to print the odd numbers from one to 10. So you exactly know how many items you have in your data set. So our syntax, we have the four keyword, and then in parentheses, we have three statements. The first one is initialization. We are initializing a loop variable. We have the loop condition. If this condition becomes false, we will exit the loop. And then we update the loop variable in this statement. Notice that each one of these statements is separated or terminated by a semicolon. So initialization, semicolon, loop condition, semicolon, and then loop update. Now the loop body will be surrounded by curly braces. Unless you only have one statement, if you only have one statement, the curly braces are optional. So if you look at our flow of control for for loops, we start with the initialization statement, which is in the parentheses. We check the condition. If the condition is true, we'll go inside our loop body, and then we'll go to the loop update statement. We'll check the condition again. If the condition is still true, we'll go to the loop body and execute. Then we'll go to the loop update. We keep performing this operation as long as the condition is true. Once the condition becomes false, we'll exit the for loop and then we can process our results. So let's take an example in Eclipse. Let's say I wanted to print this statement out to the user. So system.out.println and I'm going to say hello there. Now this will print hello there one time. Let's run it and see how it prints it. And let's say I wanted to print it five times instead of only one. So one option I have is I can copy that statement and paste it five times, but you'll notice my code will become very long to perform that. Now, since I know that this operation will be executing for five times, then I can utilize my for loop statements. So to use a for loop, we use the keyword for our initialization statement. We will have to initialize a loop variable. So this loop variable will be integer i equals one and then semicolon we have a condition so while i is less than or equal to five we will increment the value of i by one so what will that do we have our initialization variable i i is equal to one uh, one is less than five so we'll go and execute the loop body so we'll print hello there then once we are done with this statement, we'll go update our loop variable. So i++, plus plus, my i will become now 2. 2 is still less than or equal to 5, so we'll go and print hello there again. Once we print it, we'll go again and update the loop variable. So i++, plus plus, so i will become 3. 3 is still less than 5, so we'll go and print out hello there. We'll go update 4. 4 is less than or equal to 5. We'll print hello there. We'll update i again. I will be five, five is less than or equal to five. So print hello there. We'll go update I again. So I plus plus, it will be six. And then six is not less than or equal to five. So my loop will terminate. So this will print hello there for me um, five times. So let's run it. You'll see it printed hello there five times. Now let's say that instead of printing hello there five times, I wanted to print the numbers from one to five. So notice my loop variable i is going actually from one to five and incrementing by one every time we run or execute that loop. So instead of printing hello there, I can actually go and print i itself. So we started with i equal to one. One is less than or equal to five, so our, we are going to print i in here. So i will be printed. The value of i is now 1, so uh, 1 will be printed out there. Once we are done executing this loop statement, we'll go and update the value of i. 
i plus plus will make i equal to 2. 2 is still less than or equal to 5, so we'll go print 2. And we keep executing the, um, this loop statement until we reach i, which is not less than or equal to 5, and then we'll execute or terminate that um, loop. So let's run this. You'll see it's printing the numbers from 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now it's really important to notice your loop condition in here. If I did not put the equality sign here, it will go from 1 up to 5, not including 5. So it will not print the numbers from 1 to 5. In this case, it will only print from 1 to 4. So if you needed to include 5 in your um, calculations or your repetition, you will need to add the equality sign. So without the equal sign, it will print from 1 to 4. With the equal sign, it will print from 1 to 5. Same thing with the starting point. If you start from 0, it will execute the loop for 6 times from 0 to 5, which is 6 iterations. So if we run it, it will print from 0 to 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which are 6 numbers. If you remove the equality sign, it will print from 0 to 4, which is 5 iterations. So depending on the number of iterations that you want, if you start it from 0, you do not put an equal sign. It will go from 0 up to 5, not including 5. So it will be still 5 iterations, but it will print from 0 to 4. If you put the equal sign, it will go from 0 to 5, which will basically be 6 iterations. Another thing to note is the loop update statement. We do not have to update our loop variable by only incrementing it by 1. We can increment it by 2, 3, 4, or we can also decrement the value of i in here. So instead of incrementing the value of i by 1 using the i++, I can make it i plus equals 2, and that will increment the value by 2. So if I wanted to print the even numbers from 0 to 5, it will start with 0, then we will add 2 to 0, so it will be the next value will be 2. 2 is less than 5, so we'll print 2. Now, when we update the value of i, we are not adding 1 anymore, we're adding 2. So 2 plus 2 will be 4, and we'll be printing 4. When we increment i again, we'll increment it by 2. So 4 plus 2, it will be 6. 6 is not less than or equal to 5, so we will be terminating that loop. So in this case, we are printing all the even numbers from 0 to 5, which are 0, 2, and 4. Now, if we wanted to print the odd numbers, we can start by initializing i to 1. So when we start by initializing i by 1, we will be printing 1, then we'll add 2 to 1, so 1 plus 2 will be 3, 3 is less than or equal to 5, so we'll print 3, then when we update i, 3 plus 2, it will be 5, 5 is less than or equal to 5, so we'll print 5, and then we'll be stopping after that. So if we run this now, it will be printing the odd numbers from 1 to 5, so 1, 3, and 5. We can also use our for loops to process strings one character at a time. So if I wanted to process a string called name, so I'm going to create a string called name, and I'm going to store my name in that string. Now, since we know how many characters we have in a string by using the dot length method, the length method will tell me exactly how many characters I have in my string. And I know that my string starts numbering the characters by the number 0. So the first character will be at location 0, and the last character will be at location length minus 1. So if I use the for loop and use my loop variable i starting from 0 and going all the way up to the number of characters I have in that string. So to get the number of characters in a string, we use the string variable name, and then we can get the length of that string. Notice I did not use an equal sign in here because the length or the character at location length does not exist. We do not have a character at location length. We're going from 0 up to the length minus 1. If you wanted to add an equal sign, you will have to put minus 1 after the length in here. And we are updating the value of our loop variable by 1. So we'll start with the first character at 0. And then the second character, which is at 0 plus 1 at location 1. And we keep going until we reach the length um, minus 1. 
So we keep going until we reach the link minus one. So if we wanted to print our string or our name um, character by character and each character on a separate line, we can use system.out.println. And to get a character at a specific location, we can use the string variable name and then car at, which will get you the character at a location. Now, the location is changing. We start with location zero, then one, then two, then three, until we reach the length minus one. So we can use the variable i, which is starting from zero up to the length minus one. So if we run this code, you'll see that it will be printing my name one character at a time. Each character is on a separate line. We can also print our string in a reverse order. So instead of starting from the character at location zero, I can start from the last character, which is at location name.length minus one. So if I started my i from name.length minus one, we will start from the last character. And we want to keep going until we reach the first character, which is at location zero. So as long as my i is greater than or equal to zero, we want to go or, um, and print that character. But now we are not going up, we are not going this way, we are going this way. So instead of going i plus plus, we want to go i minus minus. So again, we're starting from the location name.length minus one, which is this character. And we keep going as long as my i is greater than or equal to zero. And every time we are updating the loop variable after we print the character, we'll decrement i by minus minus. So we started with length minus one, which is in this case, we have six characters. So this is location five. The next time we execute, my i will be equal to four, which is this character. Then we'll be at location three, location two, location one, and then finally location zero, which is our last character that we want to print. And then we will stop. So if we run this program, you'll see it's printing my name, but in a reverse order. So we started with I, R, K, U, H, S. A very important thing to remember is we do not want to include the character at location name.length because we do not have a character at that location. So if you forget to put minus one after the length, you will actually try to print a character that does not exist in your string. And you will get an exception that tells you that the string index is out of bounds. So string index out of bounds exception, because we are trying to access a character that is not part of our string. So index six does not belong to our string. We, are, we only have from zero up to the last character at location five. So make sure that you do not include any character outside your string range. Same thing here. If you do not stop at zero and you went to minus one, it, you will get also that same error, which is string index out of bound. So far, we only had one statement in our for loop body, and that's why we did not need to put a curly brace in here. However, if you decide that you need more than one statement in your for loop body, it's really important to put all these statements enclosed in a curly brace block. So having your statements in a curly brace block means these statements will belong to the for loop. If you forget to put that, or these curly braces, any statement after the first statement will not be included in your for loop block. So let's say instead of printing these characters out to the user, we want to store them in another string. So let me create a new string here, string, um, let's call it reverse. And we can start it with an empty string. And every time we get a character, we want to concatenate it. So reverse plus equals and we'll get that character. So name dot car at at location i. So every character we get, we will want to add it to that reverse. And then we can actually also at the same time print out that character. So system dot out dot print line and we'll print the name dot car at i. So I'm doing two things here. Um, getting the character, storing it, or adding it to the reversed um, string, and I'm also printing that character. So I'm doing two things in this for loop, not only one thing. So in this case, I am um, enclosing these statements in curly braces. 
Now, after I'm done storing all my characters in that reverse, st um, reverse string, I can go outside my loop and print that reverse string. So system.out.println and I can print that reverse. So if you run it now, you'll see we are printing one character at a time, each character in a line, and then when we are done with all the characters, we're actually printing the reverse string, which we stored the string in a reversed order.